Hey folks, I'm Mike. Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this blog ad free. Hello folks and welcome to Inkdependence.com. Today we're going to be looking at an ink, this ink, and uh, this is Robert Oster's Cafe Crema. You'll notice if you're sharp-eyed that I have misspelled this name a bunch of times throughout this review. Not here, but pretty much everywhere else that I wrote it. Um, this is an ink that I originally got as a sample from Anderson Pens. Thank you very much to Anderson Pens for sending out that sample. Uh, and then I liked it so much that I bought a bottle. Uh, this is uh, this was like first thing on my shopping list when I went to the Philly Pen Show. And so now I've got a whole bottle of this stuff because I kept... I kept using it was the thing, so I decided I had to have it. Um, this has mostly been in this pen, which is a Conalea uh, Monarchia. This is a beautiful uh, pen here with sort of brown and white swirling throughout it. It's supposed to be a snow-covered volcano scape. Check out the Monarchia uh, on the Conalea.com website. Uh, kind of like a pens.com perhaps anyway google it and it'll come up uh, and I got this as a birthday present for my wife it is far too extravagant but I love this pen and this is actually the only ink that I've had in here and as you can see it's this beautiful sort of uh, shady brown color that looks like coffee with cream in it and when I write with it I feel like the two colors of this pen have mingled together and become the ink it is uh, it is perfect for this pen and this is a big broad nib so I wanted to put it in something else uh, just to um, try it out and make sure I still liked it in a smaller nib. And so I put it in this pen, which is a Franklin Christoph Panther 40. I got this in Philly. You'll notice this has this cool turquoise band. I love the off-color bands and that sort of thing they put in here. And this is a medium sig nib in this one. That is a stub italic gradient. It's sort of in between an italic and a stub. And these have become my favorite nibs. So you'll see uh, two very different sorts of... Uh, performance from this ink, but both are gorgeous and I love them both. So uh, this one is an easy, easy recommendation for me. Here's what it looks like a little bit closer up. You can see, uh, you know, you've got a nice shading in there. You've got a little bit of, uh, even a little bit of sheen, it looks like up here, but it's not really sheen, I think. I think it's just the way that the light is hitting that and sort of where it pooled the most. Uh, this is, of course, my standard Rhodia number 16 pad. This is 80 gram paper. And the flow on this one, I would say, is a nice medium. It's maybe a little bit on the dry side of medium. It doesn't get all out of control in this broad nib. So I'm thinking probably it's a little bit dry and the way it pre performs in the sig nib. So maybe a little bit on the dry side of medium, but uh, well behaved. Also super well behaved on 20 pound paper. We'll take a look at that here in just a sec. Uh, and as for qualities, it doesn't really do any shame, any, um, any real sheen or anything like that. It's just got some shading to it and not a huge amount. You'll see some here from the Monarchia, uh, but that's a broad nib, of course. You see like maybe a little bit from the uh, the medium sig, but also not a ton. This is an ink that uh, kind of keeps its character. So this is uh, uh, going to be a good one. All right, let's look at... Uh, Here's the, the written review with these two different sorts of pens. Uh, the basically, basic commentary here is that I love this ink. I've said that a bunch of times, and I'm not going to take it back. Uh, so you can find this for like uh, 17, 18 bucks. Uh, wherever you find Robert Oster inks, I, of course, got this from Anderson Pens. Um, it's a bottle that I bought myself. So here it is from the broad nib, and you can see it's quite a bit darker, and you get some extra uh, like shading and that sort of thing out of it, just a little bit of shading to the dark end of the brown spectrum. And then here, actually, I've been waving the pen around for a while and thinking about it, and I got distracted, and I put it back on the page, and it took a sec to get back to where it should have been. So that's why I say it might be a little bit on the dry side. It does tend to dry in the nib a little quickly, uh, but I haven't had any problems with it drying out, and I've had it in that pen since like September, so... Uh, you know, it's done really well. Um, and then here it is from the medium sig nib, and you can see it's definitely a lot lighter than it is here. Um, not a huge amount lighter, but, you know, enough that you notice the difference, or at least I do. Uh, still, though, an easy recommend, and one that I've actually written dry in the last week and a half or something, and I was sick for most of that time. Uh, I guess it's been like two weeks now. Anyway, last couple of weeks, I've already written through an entire uh, converter in this medium sig nib. Uh, and this one, I've gone through an entire sample plus some from this bottle. So, uh, you know, this is one that I, I can't recommend strongly enough. All right, let's take a look at it on some different papers. Firstly, here we have 
the uh, 20 pound paper that I use as like just an office paper sample. This is pretty much the, you know, generic stuff you'll find from staples in your, you know, neighborhood office. Uh, and uh, there's no, nothing weird going on here. No bleeding or rather no feathering and no spreading as you can see here. Uh, even from the broader nib, you can see the lines are still nice and crisp and they're right where they're supposed to be. On the back of the page, it's the lines in between here. And you can see there's just nothing coming through, like a little bit of show through, but that's just because it's a dark ink on white paper, but no bleed, nothing like that. And you can see above it, uh, a very closely related ink is the Franklin Christoph Honeycomb. Uh, and this one with the flex nib, you did get some decent bleed through. And with the other nibs, you got a little bit of show through and that sort of thing, but just nothing here. Of course, I don't have it in a flex nib and that's gonna be a big difference because they do put down a lot of ink. So don't be uh, thinking that honeycomb bleeds like crazy or anything. It's just this one is super well behaved and I had it in reasonable sorts of pens. All right. Uh, no, you need to go over here. Here it is in a currently inked book. This is from um, Matt the Pen Habit Armstrong's Inky Fingers line. And here are the uh, two samples for this one. This one, uh, when I wrote it, I actually never wrote down what ink this was in this pen. It's definitely been Cafe Crema the whole time. And as I said, I misspelled it both times. One F. I don't know, I think I was thinking cafe instead of cafe. Anyway. Uh, and you can see it's much darker here. And so I refreshed the ink. It had darkened itself up a little bit in the pen. I, was, I hadn't used it in a little while. So this is what the, the new sample looks like. And that's what the older sample looks like. And I think both look cool, but definitely this is the newer one. And then this one, of course, is a fresh fill on this medium sig from uh, the Franklin Christoph Panther. So there you go. This is a wheat straw paper, by the way. Uh, if you haven't tried a wheat straw, I'd say give it a shot. I actually like it a lot. And this is an ink journal. You can get these at inkjournal.com. And these top two are the Cafe Crema. I managed to put two Fs in there because as I said, I actually never wrote down what ink was in this pen, which is totally weird. It's just one that I've always kind of known what was in it. So uh, there you go. There's the two different samples. Even with the fresh fill, you can see like this cool shading on this uh, Tomoe River paper. And then underneath here, we have a Mont Blanc Toffee Brown, which is different kind of brown uh, to this one. It's got a little bit of like orange tint to it maybe even. But anyway, there you go. So there's some browns. And then let's go ahead and what should we do first? Let's do the water test. And then we'll take a look at a whole bunch of uh, comparisons. I actually just dropped this on the floor. It fell off my knee. <laughs> Come on. All right. Okay. So here's the water test area. Let's go ahead and spray some water on this guy. I'm not expecting anything particular in terms of water resistance from this ink, but you just never know. That's why it's worth trying. Uh, I have lost my paper towel. Okay, this has had plenty of time to soak as I had to go and get another paper towel because I lost mine. That's all right. Just give it a little bit of more time than usual. And, yeah, most of it came up. There's not a heck of a lot left here. So while I love the color of this ink, man, it is not waterproof even a little bit. So there's most of the ink, and there's where none of the ink is anymore. So, yeah, keep this one away from water. I wasn't expecting it to be particularly water resistant, uh, and it has lived down to my expectations. Here is the chromatography. And then this is what you end up with, which is this kind of beautiful gradient from just nothing down here at the bottom, which is what we ended up with when we poured some water on this guy, uh, to uh, this dark band across the top. Little bits of yellow in there, little bits of like a, I don't know, a reddish brown kind of in the middle. But this is a, this is a beautiful chromatography, even though it doesn't have a lot of colors in it. It's got a really nice gradient. Okay, so let's look at a whole bunch of uh, color comparisons. Uh, some of these are on uh, Namasani word cards. Some of them are on coloring cards. Uh, this one is uh, Namasani. You can tell it has a slightly uh, rougher texture to the card. Uh, let's put some stuff here. Uh, let's see. We have uh, Irishizuku Tsukushi, which is the horsehair brown. And one of the Irishizukus that I actually kind of like a lot. I'm not a huge fan of that brand overall, but that one it looks pretty cool. And then this one is uh, J. Herban's Lidite, 
which is uh, we got a coffee, a, a coffee and cream. Then we've got a tea over here, and the tea is much darker. Even the Jehurban is darker than this. This just has a a whole different character to it. And here we have Sailor Rikyu Cha, which I probably should have put with the last set because that's another tea-related name. Uh, and then um, Kaiyuro's Stone Road of Gion. Neither of these is particularly close. This one's got some more greenish tints to it, and this one is more like a gray-brown. Uh, but also, this one's way undersaturated in a pen. It looks much different, I think, actually. We'll have that review coming up in the near future. Here we have KWZ Honey, which is one that's bound to be compared to it. And we'll go ahead and put the other honey here. This is Franklin Christoph's Honeycomb. You can tell that Honeycomb and Cafe Crema are definitely in the same vein, uh, though the Cafe Crema is definitely darker, and I think I might use, like it a little bit more for general use because of that darkness. Uh, honeycomb can look a little bit too yellow, a little bit too pale on the page for just like writing, I don't know, pages and pages of notes, that kind of thing. It doesn't seem super well suited to me, uh, at least not as much as Cafe Crema. Uh, Cafe Crema. And then KDBZ Honey is one that I haven't actually gotten to try. I just have a small sample of that somebody sent me and uh, it looks kind of close although definitely yellower here just like the honeycomb all right here is faber castell's hazelnut brown which is like a brown red in comparison and uh, then we have just a straight up brown brown in uh, noodler's uh, chisholm trail which is a drum ghouls exclusive that debuted at the uh, dallas pen show here this year and this is just a straight up brown then we have this kind of yellowish brown and then we have this reddish brown so lots of different there's a lot of space or a lot of yeah there's a lot of space in the brown color for all kinds of variation and that's why so many people like browns because there's so many variations available here's another noodler's this is old dutch colony sepia this is from the Fountain Pen Hospital. My friend Jim sent me a sample of that. And this is Papier Plume's Caramel, which is one I haven't had a chance to use yet, but it comes out beautifully on this card. A uh, little bit lighter, I think, than Cafe Crema, so it's going to be more in the honeycomb area, but not as yellow as either one. It's kind of a, a paler sort of brown. And then uh, Old Dutch Colony Sepia is actually pretty close, I think, to Cafe Crema. Uh, but you get um, one thing I noticed with this ink, and you can see it here perhaps in the, uh, the splotch, is that it's very dark down here in this corner, and that's because this took forever to dry, whereas Cafe Crema didn't have any problems drying. So uh, a little bit of a, this one performs better, I think. I haven't gotten to use this one in a pen, but it took forever to dry as a swatch, so I'm not super hopeful of it. All right, so that's it. That has been Robert Oster's Cafe Crema. You should definitely check this one out if you like this kind of yellowish brown with this, uh, these pale undertones, makes it look like ca uh, coffee and cream. Or if you have a uh, Mauna Kea from Kanalea Pen Company, uh, you know, check it out because it's kind of a perfect match. All right, that's it. Thank you very much, Standerson Pens, for sending out the original sample, and uh, I will see you all later. Peace out.